Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, no problems today. What we want to talk today about something that's pretty fascinating. Pendular motion. The story is told of Galileo. He was at church one day at the cathedral in Pisa, Italy, a tower of Pisa place, and he was looking up at the chandeliers. There was some wind inside and they were moving back and forth. And he noticed something crazy. Even though they had different weights, they were swinging with the same period. And he couldn't figure that out, the same length of ropes. And so he went back to his lab and he started playing around and he discovered some fascinating things about pendular motion. Now, if, if you are a student of my class, then you've actually played around with pendular motion and you may know some of the things we're about to cover. But if you don't, pay attention. And if you are in my class, I encourage you to, again, just refresh your mind from the experiment that you did in class. So what is a pendulum, right? So a pendulum is something that's hanging, right? I'm going to put it in an angle. Um, sometimes it's a circle. We actually call the circle a bob. Bob, not bod. <laughs> go down here. There will be some angle and it's going to go back and forth, right? Pendulum, pendulum. But if we think about what's actually going on with this is there's a weight, right? The weight is equal to mg pushing down, right? Now what's pushing back up here, the force, this is the tension in the string. But because we've got angle junk going on here, right? We've actually got some other angles going on. We can draw, for lack of a better term, um, a right triangle. We have a right triangle right here. And we can find these angles. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, but this is going to be mg cosine of theta. And this will be mg sine of theta. Because at this angle, when you measure this angle, and these are similar triangles, so it's all going to work out. So this is the, if you will, the force diagram. These are all forces, right? F equals mg, where g is the acceleration of gravity on the planet that you happen to be on when you're doing this. And of course, it's going to go back and forth and back and forth. So that's, that's the diagram, but what does it tell us? And when we measure the period of the pendulum, it turns out that the period, t, remember we learned about t in the previous video, is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. Now, I don't make sure L is the length of the, of the string, right? L is... And from there, we can do a number of problems. So we've got a problem right here, right? Yo-yo is a string with 0.75 meters. Da, 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 da. What is the period of oscillation of the yo-yo if it swings back and forth? So all they're giving us is L. L is equal to 0 0.75 meters. Well, folks, we're going to use our cool equation. T is equal to uh, 2 pi, sorry, times the square root of L over g. Now we're assuming that we're here on the earth, so that's equal to 2 pi square root of L, which is 0.75 divided by 9.81. You get a calculator out, I'm going to trust that you know how to do that on a calculator, and you get 1.7 seconds. This is easy, guys, just plugging it in. So that's the how long it happens, but this actually leads us to some very interesting questions. So we've got our pendulum, and it moves back and forth and back and forth. And if you recall the equation, right? So there's an interesting question, right? If you were to increase the mass of the bob, would it go faster? Would the period make it faster? Because if you increase the mass of the bob, the mg is going to be higher, right? And so your expectation is that the higher mass, the period would go down because it's going to move faster, right? But that's wrong because what's actually happening is this has more mass. So it's more difficult to move a bigger mass, the momentum, the momentum, whatever word I'm looking for. And therefore, the additional mass that you have to uh, overcome is perfectly balanced out by the gravity. So mass, and we know this from the equation, really. Notice mass is not in the equation. Mass does not affect the uh, period of a pendulum. And the next question, though, is what does the effect of gravity have on this? And we, of course, can see it in the equation. So if you have a differing gravity, it's going to push down at a, a, a bigger amount. And notice it's the inverse of the square root, right? So if I were to double the 
acceleration of gravity, go to a planet twice the mass of the Earth with the same circumference, then nine, this wouldn't be 9.8, but it would be 19, or just double, so it would, it would decrease by a factor of 1 over the square root of 2, right? And interesting things, how you can kind of figure these out, double something, triple something. If I cut the gravity in half, then it's going to have a faster period. Uh, now, this is actually interesting because there's some problems that can be done in physics land that are very interesting. Because when we say g is 9.8, right, that's actually 9.8 like on some particular spot on the Earth. It turns out that it's different in different parts of the Earth because the radius of the Earth changes. Um, and there's actually more massive objects. So if you're over like Mount Everest, there's a big massive object underneath you, like the mountain. And so um, there's really super interesting things that, that we map the Earth. Gravitational maps of the Earth tell us interesting things about like the geology underneath and what they do. How do they actually measure like what's underneath? One of the things is they take a super duper crazy accurate pendulum and they solve for G and they don't get 9.81, they get some other number and that tells them something about the geology under the Earth. Which leads us to this question. We've got a pendulum again, right? And it's 0.627. 0.627 meters, and this is 0 0.250 kilogram bob, and T equals 1.59 seconds. If the pendulum is held at the vertical position, the string is cut. All right, so when it's completely vertical, so at this point, we take scissors, and we cut the string how long before it falls one meter? Now, we've done problems like this. If you just drop something, right, we use the equation um, y, right, equals um, one half gt squared, right? So this is how we solve for how long it would take. If I, I know the distance y being one meter. If I drop an object, one meter. Uh, so in this problem, because we've got this whole pendulum thing, we're going to solve for g first, not using 9.8, but find out what it would be here, right? This is kind of how we could figure out some cool stuff with, uh, yeah. So we're going to use the equation that t, right, is equal to 2 pi square root of L over G. In this case, we want to solve for G, and then we're going to plug that into this equation and solve for this t. Now our time, uh, our period, if you will, is 1.59 seconds, and that's equal to 2 pi square root of 0 0.6227 over g. Now we rearrange, have to square things. I'm not going to get into the algebra of this, but you've solved g and what you come up with is 9.79. Not 9.81, but 9.79. Now we're going to plug that into this equation, right? And we're going to say y, y it dropped one meter, so one is equal to one half times 9.79 times t squared. Again, do some algebra, and there's a square root because this is t squared, and you come up with t equal to 0 0.452 seconds. It's a little more complex, but this is what this is using is this idea that g isn't like 100% consistent all over the Earth. Houston. These aren't that hard, are they? It's just, it's, this is like a combination of something we've learned before, uh, and then kind of this, we've got a brand new equation. It's right here, uh, but we're using this because we've seen the G before in other equations. Houston, we don't have a problem. Catch you in class.